Guys, welcome to my six millimeter monkey rifle overview. It's great to have you on the channel. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure you hit the like button and you subscribe to the video not to miss any awesome precision rifle and hunting content that we've got planned for the year. Now, you're probably here because you watched my monkey video, okay, or monkey videos. This is the setup that we ran in the previous video and it absolutely wrecked. Stupid accurate and I'm gonna take you guys today through the whole system now before we get there if you scan this QR code here if you're watching on your TV or if you're on your smartphone the link in the first comment below this video is gonna take you to MDT's website which is a very unique website now there's a coupon code there where if you're shopping for MDT stuff you can get a very exclusive sticker that you can only get by shopping with this link. And on this page, you can also see some of the breakdowns of my match rifle, my other hunting rifles and stuff like that. So some super cool stuff there. Now, usually what we do in a video like this is we kind of go tip to tip, okay? Or ass to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Right, so first things first, on the front, when I posted photographs of this, and I'll show you guys close-ups of everything as we sort of run through this project, when I posted pictures of this on my Instagram, and by the way, if you're not following me, impact shooting without the G on the end on Instagram would be wonderful. We share some super cool stuff there. People were asking, Pete, why aren't you running a Warbird suppressor or silencer on the front? Now, in fact, I am. This is just a first version of a titanium prototype, and this thing performed absolutely flawlessly. I was super, super stoked with the performance we got there. It's very much hunting specific, as you can imagine. They will be premium, but the final production version will be slightly different than this. It was literally just a test. Now, interestingly enough, when I was zeroing my rifle, I'd never shot it before, and I basically only took that. And I was shooting like 0.3 MOA groups at 110 yards, so pretty freaking good. And that basically meant that I knew this was gonna absolutely hammer. Okay, then coming back, I usually run a lightweight sky pot, okay, on my hunting rifle. Now, to be honest, in South Africa, I've probably not used um, a bipod for a shot in 95% of all the shots I've taken, because this is kind of how I hunt. I hunt from a tripod rather. However, in a recent fall rebook hunt that I did, I did actually find a spot where I could go prone. Now, the reason for that is because we have a lot of tall bushes, so therefore I mount a full length arca rail underneath my rifle like this, okay? And that basically allows me this ability to quickly slide on and off attachments as I need them or clip my rifle in and out of the tripod and it's super modular, so that's very cool. And that brings us to the Timber Frontier stock that this rifle is housed in. Now, what's really cool about the stock is it does have M-Lock slots underneath it so that you can mount attachments whether you wanna mount a Picatinny rail or an Arca rail or something to that effect, you can do that. Now, when I shot the stock recently, I had a little Ocarrel on the front here for shooting matches for only my bipod, but when I took it hunting, I basically just swapped that out and put a slightly longer Ocarrel on there. Now, we're running an International Barrels 26 inch pipe, okay, with a one in seven twist. And in my sort of hunting configuration, I shoot, there's quite a bit of wobble the way it's clamped now because I haven't gotten the balance point right. There we go, that should be much better. Now, like I was saying, when I hunt, I shoot the 87 grain Burger VLD hunting bullets, and I'm pushing them at about 3,080 feet per second, give or take, between 380 and 31. And that gives me ridiculous performance as well as explosive results on target. Now, these are highly accurate, and I'm loading around about 30.5 grains of Varget, so that should give you an idea of kind of the performance I'm getting out of a 26 inch barrel with a little bit of extra boost as it gets a little bit of sort of free velocity in the last bit of the suppressor. Does it make a difference? It doesn't make a difference. I don't actually know, but whatever. Running it at about 3-1. Then, on the side of my rifle here, you will notice is our little, what we call a sidekick recoil control device. Now, because the Frontier doesn't actually have 
M-lock slots on its side, what I did was I used wood glue just to glue this onto the chassis or the stock. And uh, that's actually held, like I'm pulling as hard as I can basically, and it's not going anywhere. And what that allows me to do is when I'm doing like positional shooting, or in this case, we were hunting like from the back of a, a Land Cruiser, it allows me to run that thumb very ergonomically over here and basically drive that rifle, make sure that I have good follow-up shots. So these are available. They're a 3D printed part that I sell here. They also go on M-Lock compatible stuff. Actually designed it for precision rifle predominantly, but I kind of just want them on all my rifles now because it's so comfortable just to have a super cool spot for your, um, for your hand to be. Also because I've run this stock in some precision rifle matches, you'll notice there's some sort of what appears to be textured tape. Now this is actually not the sandpaper kind, it's almost like a rubberized sticky thing that I put on here and that just allows me, especially when I'm not running the full length RKRL, just that little bit of more grip and when I'm placing my hand here, I've got a little bit of that grip sort of in my palm swell area. So that is what you see there. Now, very important, this rifle is built on a bat machine TR action. These actions are absolutely world class. It is horrifically dirty now, but let me run this bolt for you guys. So just that you can, that you can hear this. It is, that's not ASMR for men. I don't know what it is. It is ridiculously smooth, okay? So this action is also my match action that I shoot when I shoot this dasher in sort of its match configuration. Then to top it all off, we have a Razer LHT. Now this is basically Vortex's, you know, hunting Razer for lack of a better description. It's, I, I think it's a very nice replacement for like, if you guys remember back in the day, Vortex had a scope. Actually, let me grab one. Over here is this is the predecessor, what I believe, to this. This is the Razer AMG. Now, this was actually the very first optic or the highest end optic. This was my first sort of spendy optic that I ever bought from Vortex. And uh, it was the bee's knees when it just came out and I absolutely love the Razer AMG still. Hence, I still have it in my inventory and I haven't sold it because this lightweight first focal plane and that's basically what you get here with the LHT. You've got illuminated reticle. Now mine is modified a little bit. I've got a ballistics turret. Now this link will also be down below in the video for you guys where you'll get a little bit of discount if you wanna set up your own ballistic turret. It's super handy for when you're hunting, especially in a scenario where your guide is saying 300 yards, you can just dial to 300 yards instead of having to worry, okay, 300 yards is 0.7 or whatever the case may be. You just dial to 300 and you're off to the races. Now, it's a little bit contradictory because I'm also running the Impact 4000 on the top here. This is one of Vortex's latest innovations and I think it is still massively underrated. I've been vocal about this where initially when I saw this, I was like, eh, a little bit gimmicky maybe, but now having hunted with it like three, four times and taken over a hundred animals with this, it is unbelievable. If you guys are familiar with the Swarovski DS concept, it basically turns any optic into that Swarovski DS, you just have to still manually either shoot off your reticle or dial in that innovation. But this thing is absolutely rock solid. So it's a rail mounted ballistic laser range finder. So you basically collimate it with your reticle and as soon as you either press the button on here or on the little remote that I sometimes Velcro on the side of my rifle here so that I can do it with my trigger finger, it says 0.7, I hold 0.7 on the monkey or the springbok or whatever the case we're hunting that given day and it's absolutely magnificent. I've come to fall in love with this even more after this most recent trip. Then something we didn't speak about is the rings, okay? So in order to run this sort of diving board mount that is on the rings here, you need to be running the Vortex PMR rings. Now this is kind of rings that I gravitate to for the most part, they are very expensive, but if you've got an expensive setup to then put little cheapy worn rings on or something like that, I don't really see the point in that. That's why I always make sure my scope is in a set of quality rings. Then our little bang button over here, obviously we know that this rifle is safe. This is a trigger tech diamond trigger, okay? And it is a two stage trigger. So I have that little bit of take up before our ultimate bang. Last but not least, the tripod used in this video. I have been a massive proponent of tripod hunting pretty much since I started tripod hunting. Initially it was like I modified camera tripods to have them work on my rifles, but nowadays with Arca and all of these things, it is an absolute game changer. So if you're looking for tripods, make sure you go over to my website here in South Africa, impactproshop.net for the local guys obviously. For tripods for this hunting season, we've got a wide variety of tripods 
and I promise you, you will not regret spending a little bit of time getting comfortable shooting groups from a tripod before hunting season because this just opens up shots that were never a possibility in the past. So very, very, very cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I glanced over here. I don't believe so. Oh, there is actually. Something that's not in this rifle at the moment is the magazines that I use. Now being a six millimeter dasher, that is what this is chambered in, you do not get little magazines that sit flush with this. So what I did was I took the 308 MDT three round mags and I modified those by 3D printing spaces and a new follower so that we can actually use the little three round mags and even the five round mags. And that is also something that I sell on my store, impactproshop.net. So if that's you and you're looking for flush mounted BR mags or five round BR mags, that is a solution that we have for you. So guys, that's the overview of this amazing rifle. It really is a phenomenal rifle. Now in an ideal world, I'd want something even faster. So stick around, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We have just received word that a massive shipment of rifles is heading inbound to South Africa. So I am super, super stoked, okay, to bring you guys a whole bunch of content, low development, first range trips, hunting trips, all of the lovely stuff with our brand new rifles, carbon barrel, 22 creeds, 300 blackouts, it's gonna be a phenomenal year and you don't want to miss that. Thanks again for MDT for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking for any precision rifle stuff, hunting stuff, make sure you swing by MDT Sporting Goods or MDTTech.com. And then if you're still watching and you're not subscribed, we're on a mission to get to 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please share all of our videos with your mates. We'd appreciate that a lot. Okay guys, God bless every single one of you. See you in the next one. Cheers.